Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies of the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harris, and this is my podcast. Looking forward to this new season of studies. We're going to be opening the book of Hebrews and studying it chapter by chapter, verse by verse. This is an exciting book about the new covenant and the Lord Jesus Christ and all that He is. Grab your Bibles, grab your notebook, and let's get ready to go. Fight the good fight of faith. Matthew chapter 9. So, um... We are going to get into the book of Hebrews eventually. I've been laying a fair amount of groundwork in in just trying to give the context of the book of Hebrews. Uh, It is a book of the New Covenant. But while we were doing that, I wanted to just talk a little bit about what Christ was doing when he was on the earth and the relationship that he was under the Old Covenant, under the law. And the law was far more than the Ten Commandments. It was was the whole ceremonial law and the and, and the uh, laws of how to live and how to, how to carry out you know, relationships and business relationships and, and things like that. It was, so the law was pretty encompassing. In, uh, but when Christ came, so what happened under the, under the old covenant, the nation of Israel broke it, met, you know, didn't keep it, right? They, they, uh, they, uh, they continued to not do it. And so God basically brought upon them the uh, cursing, right? So, and you know, we looked at uh, Deuteronomy 27, 28 last time, and under the law, they were under the curse. And when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, what he does is he begins to healing everybody. He's, what he's doing is saying that, well, let's read this, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went all about the cities, okay, and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, all right, and doing something else, and healing what? Every sickness and every disease among the people. So like when you read about, like we read about the various miracles of what Christ did, well, he healed, I mean, you don't even have a, a you know, we didn't even skim the number of miracles that, you, that are recorded in scripture. Christ healed every disease, every sickness. So look what it says over in, uh, say, Matthew 10, uh, verse 5. He tells the, the apostles, the disciples, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and in any of the city of Samaritans, and you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of who? The house of Israel. So go to Israel, okay, because there's a reason, because Israel is under the law, and there's under the curse, and what he was doing is demonstrating something. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the God, you know, it's within reach. The other promise God made, which is the new covenant, which the book of Hebrews is about, Okay, that, this new other promise, which is the kingdom. Okay, Israel is going to be in a different place. But says, and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is hand, verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. He says, you know, basically lift the curse, because the curse was that they were under all this calamity. The nation itself was, was uh, the tail. They were, the, they, were, they were no longer the head. Under the, in the kingdom, they're going to be the head. They're going to be uh, uh, above, above sort of all. Uh, let's look at one other. Uh, well, let's go to Isaiah, book of Isaiah. This is what it'll be in the kingdom. I, you know, I've read like um, specific passages of the second covenant uh, or the new covenant in Jeremiah and in Ezekiel. But like really throughout the Old Testament, through the prophets anyways, they point to this time, to, to, to what's going to happen. So in the kingdom, this is what they're looking for. This is the good news of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is what they're looking at. This is what they're interested in. This is what you know, God says to them. This is what the nation is going to be. Because what the nation is at that moment is really at the bottom. They have Roman rule, Roman rule and... In fact, when Christ came in on Palm Sunday, what were they yelling? What were the people yelling? Hosanna, 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 which means what? I said it before. What's it mean? So, okay, maybe you're visual visual learners. All right, so Hosanna. Okay, Hosanna, I think I'm spelling that right, means save now. Save now. Save us now. And they weren't talking about soul salvation. They're talking about get rid of Rome. Make us who we're supposed to, you know, who God says we should be, right? Because we screwed up, okay? So the Messiah, they, when they were saying, they're recognizing he was Messiah, but they expected him to get off, they came, expected him to come on a white horse, and he came on what? A donkey. He's going to come on a white horse, all right? They're expecting him to come with power and authority and remove Rome, but instead... He came humbly, 
to die. All right? So he did something different that, that, that they didn't want at that time, so they rejected him. But they wanted to be who God wanted to be. So here's Isaiah 60. So here's what is going to be. This is what they wanted. They wanted this. They wanted this kingdom. They wanted Christ, you know, the Messiah, to be king of all the earth. And then they would be this. Okay, Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And he's talking to Israel. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness to people. That is, there's going to be, you know, this problem, this, this darkness happen. That's the tribulation, right? The second coming happens, right? It says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen, what? Upon thee. People are going to look at you, and they're going to see who? They're going to see Christ. They're going to see God. They're going to see His glory. And the Gentiles, that's everybody that's not Israel, okay? That's what that word sort of means. It means two things. One is not, depending on, depending on the context, it, it can mean no national distinction, that there's no nation, because God only ever recognized one real nation as His people, and that was Israel, right? So, it's, so, the, the, so it means no national distinction, or it means the nations. It seems opposites, but it's... it's uh, same thing. And the Gentiles should come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of what? Thy rising. They're going to be raised up. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged, because, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, and the force of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. They're going to come to you. They're going to come to you. They're going to recognize who you are. Down in verse 12. For the nation and the kingdom that, sh that will not, what? Serve, Serve thee shall, what? Perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Okay, down in verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending up under thee. What are they going to do? They're going to bow down right before you, right? And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee, what? The city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken, okay, and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an, ex an eternal, how long? Eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. Thou also shalt suck the milk of Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of the kings, and shalt know that I, uh, the Lord, am the, the Savior, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. That's what they're looking for. That's the kingdom. That's the gospel. That, that's the. That's what God, Christ was coming. It's. It's at hand, right? Here it comes, right? The old covenant. They broke it, all right, and they were in, in, in despair. But under the new covenant, this new promise that's made to Israel, God makes it as, as you know, I'm going to ask you some questions here a little bit, and hopefully you do better than Hosanna, okay, because we'll have to go read it again. But, but we're gonna, you know, there's promises under the new covenant that, that, were, that, that were made, all right? Verse down in 21, notice this, I mean, this, is, this is part of the new covenant. Verse 20 of Isaiah 60. Thy people also shall be what? All righteous. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 11, and, and all Israel shall be saved, right? They'll, they'll, be all, you know, they'll all be saved. By the way, not everybody who's in Israel who calls their father Abraham or you know, has a lineage that goes back to Jacob is Israel. They have to have a change of the heart. Uh, there's going to be something that changes. They shall inherit the land for what? Forever, right? That's part of it. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands. It's God saying this, right? That I may be glorified. So God says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. A little one should become a thousand, and, shall, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten in this time. There's going to be prosperity and strength and wealth in that nation. Down in verse chapter 61, verse 3. Verse 3, Isaiah 61. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion right now. Okay, to give unto them beauty for what? We sing a song, right? right? Ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. There's going to be, there's going to be a switch. They're, they're in this situation. They're in, they're in ashes but they're going to be in joy, okay? They're, they're in heaviness, but they're going to have you know, a garment of praise, okay? That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall just repair the waste cities and desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. I mean, you, you, you are a servant of everybody else. You know what? They're going to serve you. This is what they're looking for. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named what? The priests of the Lord. And that's not you. 
That's Israel, okay? They're going to be a nation of priests. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. They're going to be servants, right? Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Anyways, for your shame ye shall have double, and for your confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For the Lord of judgment, I hate robbery for burnt offering. Anyways, it goes on to say, talk about other things. But God is, that, that's the promise to them. Uh, chapter 62, verse 11, verse, 13, verse 12. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the, under the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Israel, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them, what? The holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out. People want you. A city, what? Not forsaken. Israel is going to be raised up and, and be what it ought to be. The book of Daniel gives the process, okay? You've heard of the 70 weeks of Daniel, right? Well, there are, you know, 69 have taken, been taken care of. There's one yet to go for the process. But you're there in Isaiah. You can go find Daniel chapter 9, can't you? Just a little further, Daniel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. There's lamentations in there somewhere. Daniel chapter 9. An angel comes to Daniel, it's angel Gabriel, and comes and says, here, there's some things that are that have to happen yet. But after it happens, this is it, okay? And the Lord Jesus Christ talks about the seventh week of Daniel. Matthew 24, 25, 26, talk, or 24 and 25, talk about this. Here's what's going to happen, and then Christ's going to come, set up his kingdom, and, and you know, all the nations are come before him, and he's going to sit on his throne, and all those things, right? Daniel 9, verse 24, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, that's talking to Daniel, so talking about Israel, and upon thy holy city, Right? That city is now laid in waste at this moment in time that this, Dan this angel's talking to Daniel. And this is what it'll do. It'll finish the, tra you know, so the, the, the 70 weeks is going to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. As you know, Christ is going to come in, all the promises and all that were all that said, that's going to happen. Um, at Christmas, uh, a lot of times we read this passage. I'll just read it to you in Isaiah chapter 9. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Talk about Jesus Christ, right? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. Where was David's throne? Jerusalem, Jerusalem right? And upon his kingdom... To order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The second covenant, this, what the Christ is talking about in the kingdom, the promise made is not contingent upon Israel doing something wonderful, not even obeying. God says, I'm going to make them obey. I'm going to change them. He's going to give them, a, as, the, as the second covenant says, a new heart. He's going to put a spirit within them going to cause them to walk in his ways and and they will be all righteous from the least of them to the greatest of them israel will will be saved so when christ comes they're under the old covenant and when he comes he's preaching it's in hand you know i'm the means to get there right we got to go through a week of problems seven years and here's the preparation he's really preparing them to go through that tribulation and he tells them that, you know, it's, it's with him, but you've got to recognize I'm the boat, I'm the ark, okay? I'm the way. There's no other way but through me. And so, you know, you need to recognize that. Well, the nation, the leadership rejected, right? Okay? And he was crucified, which was also God's plan anyways. Without that, that what, you know, we wouldn't have any of this, right? So, but Israel is to be this kingdom, this kingdom of priests. Peter says it in 1 Peter. Go to 1 Peter, and then I'll write some stuff on the board here. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Peter's talking to Israel, right? Talking to the nation, the scattered folks that are in, being persecuted. He says in verse 9 of 1 Peter, he says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a whole, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. They're, they are a chosen 
generation, right? They're a royal priesthood, a kingdom of priests. That's what God's called them to be, and they will serve that way in the millennium, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the kingdom, right? The kingdom lasts forever. The millennium is just a fir first part of it. There's a little difference to what's happening at that period of time. Go to Luke 22. Luke 22, verse 28. So I'll just back up the context. By the way, the, the, the disciples and the apostles, they were perfect men, weren't they? They were, they were perfect people, right? They, had no, they didn't bicker, right? They didn't, they, didn't get, uh, they didn't get upset, right? In verse 23, it says this, And they began to acquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. As Christ talked about, there was going to be somebody that was going to betray him. And then verse 24, and there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted what? <laughs> so there's a bad guy in the group, and then, hey, who's the best of the group, right? So, so I'm, we're the, I'm the best of the 12, and then there's the worst of the 12, right? And so Christ, he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Anyway, he's giving some, teaching some like, hey, humility situation things here, right? But anyway, verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. You've been with me through all my testings and trials here, right? And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, all right? That you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on what? Twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So, so they're gonna, they're gonna, the apostles are going to sit in the king. So he's talking about the kingdom, all right? He's going to be king and... There's not going to be a greatest or a least amongst them. They're going to be at his table, right? You know, I mean, King Arthur, that, that whole idea was to take that concept, you know. What type of table was it? A round table. Why? So that there was no greater or least. They were all part of it. And Christ is trying to tell them that. You're all going to be at my table. There's no, you know, you're going to, you're going to get to share. But you're going to be with me in the kingdom. You know, I'm, you know, you're going to be part of it. And you're going to sit on 12 thrones. And you're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel, there's going to be this, you know, this hierarchical leadership in that kingdom. Going to be in that kingdom. You're in Luke. Oh, okay, I just read that. Okay. Uh, anyway, so we're, we're in that kingdom. Okay, so let's, let's talk about some of the, the blessings and things like that in, in the kingdom. So, what are, so under the second, well, I should not do it that way because it's called new. Under new covenant, I'm going to try to write slow so you can read it. Okay, I have, I have determined that I'm going to try to do that. We'll see what, see what happens. So, so what are the things promised to Israel under, under the new covenant? A land, right? So they're, they're promised the land, and the land is, is pretty large, all right? It goes from Egypt, the Nile, effectively, to the Euphrates River, all right? So it's, it's much larger than what you look on a map, right? So it's... Uh, it's, it's pretty large, right? So they're promised land. How long do they have the land? Forever. It's forever, right? So, so they have a land promise. What else are they promised? Kings. A king, okay? And which king are we talking about? Okay, so king, so Messiah, Christ will be king, right? They're also promised another king, David, okay? David is king. So David, so Christ is king of the earth, so of earth, and David will be king of the nation, so David will be king uh, of the earth. Go back to Zechariah last time I... Well, Zechariah 8.23 says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts... Oh, okay, something else. So this Israel's is raised up again. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold, of, take hold out of all languages of all nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard what? That God is with you. They will come to... To him. You've been listening to the High Band with Word podcast, Transformer Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith and God's best to you.